We serve a God who is faithful, he's forgiving, and he is long-suffering. He's the kind of God who will look down and minister to you at the lowest point in your life. When you don't see a way, when you're at the point of giving up, God will find a way and restore you. And one of my favorite songs by Donna Lawrence is that the best is yet to come. I don't know about you, but I've been in situations where I'm just like, okay, everything was going good for a while. It looked like it was going to be okay. And then all of a sudden, everything just came crashing down. And it looked like the situation was hopeless. And it was then that God came and he ministered and he restored and he lifted me to a place that was better than the place where I left. And he made things better. That's the kind of God that we serve. And we live in a society where things are uncertain. You know, it used to be so you could work a job and the job would be loyal and you stay there and you would retire with benefits and with money and you'd be okay. And now we're living in a world where jobs will just cast you out, lay you off, family will turn against you, even the church will turn against you. But God will be the God of the castaway. He will go out. And there's another hymn that I love that says that from the water, Jesus lifted me. And sometimes you don't always make the right decisions and you don't always do the right things. And God is just, and he's merciful and he will restore you. All you have to do is have faith in him and love him and trust him. God, I say this all the time and I believe this with all of my heart. God did not create anything that he cannot sustain. In as much as God created me, he thought enough of me to allow me to be born. He is going to take care of me all the days of my life. Once again, we are here for the Sanctuary Sunday School and I am so grateful for you that are joining me today. And if this is your first time, go ahead, tap that bell, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything. Now I have received feedback that some of you are not getting notifications for all of your videos. And that's because there's so many people subscribed to YouTube now until all of the, no the notifications don't get to all of the subscribers. But if you are subscribed, just go to the channel the lessons are there every single week. I usually post on Sunday night. They go live for both Union Gospel Press and the International Sunday School Lesson. So if you go to the YouTube channel or even go through the website, www.thesanctuary.academy, you will be able to find your Sunday School lesson. This week's subject is Hager and Ishmael Cast Out. And last week, we, we started this story. We started this lesson last week. It's in the book of Genesis when we talked about God blessing Sarah and Abraham with Isaac. And then it says that she put Hagar out the house. And so this lesson picks up where that lesson left off, where it says that Abraham was upset. He was, he was hurt and he was worried about his son because that was his physical son that Hagar gave birth to. But once Sarah, who was the lady of the house, decided she had to go, she had to go. And God spoke to Abraham and he comforted him and he told him that it was going to be okay, that he was going to bless her. And so Abraham gave her some bottles of water and sent her on her way. And this also speaks to Abraham's faith because this is his son and he gave this lady this water and sent her out knowing that they would not be able to survive if God did not intervene and he trusted God to intervene on behalf of Hagar and his son Ishmael. And so we see here that she went out and she took the bottles of water and she left. And again, it this whole thing was not right, but at the same time, it is important to understand that Abraham and Sarah were Hagar's employers. And that, that jumped out at me and it struck me because we're living in a world where employers are being unduly harsh to employees. You hear so many people, so many church people talk about stress related to work. We're not having, we don't have a lot of leaders and bosses who actually care about people. 
And as far as I'm concerned, the first requirement of a leader is to care about the people you're leading. If you can't do that, you're not fit to be a leader. But we're not seeing a lot of that. And this lesson is very encouraging because if you're in a situation where you need to earn a living and your employers are not being fair with you, you have to know that God will take care of you and he will provide for you. Now, yes, when Hagar gave birth to Ishmael and Sarah had not had any children, there was some animosity and Hagar did not have the right attitude. But at the same time, she did what her master commanded her to do. So it's kind of like, well, you can't tell me to do this, then get mad because I did it. So it was just a bad situation all the way around. And this is a good story, though, on this side of the story, because it shows me that even if you make a mistake, even if you exercise poor judgment, even if you are in the wrong, when you are under the blessings of God, when you follow the directions of God, he will still bless you. And I love that God has delivered me out of situations that I caused, stuff that I was my fault. It was my fault. And God still was gracious and merciful enough to bring me through it and take care of me. And he never left me. And that is a good, good father right there. So we talk about this and how Hagar left and she went out into the wilderness and she had this water and the water ran out. And this part of this story is so heartbreaking to me because it says that she put the child under a bush and then she went a, a, a distance away. It says the arrow's length. She went away from him because she could not bear to watch her son die. That is just a heart wrenching scenario, especially as a mother. When you believe that your child is going to die and there is nothing you can do about it as a mother, I don't know about you. The most important thing in my life was being able to take care of my daughter and provide for her and keep her safe and keep her okay. So to think about how Hagar must have felt at this moment to have a son, not have anything, not even be able to give him any water. And that is the position that she was in. And it was in that time that God came to her. And he comforted her and he told her, he said, go get your son, go pick your son up because it is going to be all right. And the word says she opened her eyes and she saw some water and she was able to give her son something to drink. And God assured her that he was going to be all right. And he grew up and it says that he became an archer An archer is someone who hunts with the bow and an arrow. And she said that he's going to be great and is this gonna, he's going to be a ruler. And that's what God will do from you. God will take you from being cast out and he will place you in a position of greatness. See, sometimes when we get saved, we want to pretend like we've always been saved and we ain't never done nothing wrong. And we're just so great. That is not how it is. That is not a requirement. You do not have to have a background that's full of money. You don't have to have a background where you're educated. You don't have to have a pedigree where my father is this or my father is that and my mother has this. No, God will pick up the one who is cast out, the one who nobody wants, the one who has been mistreated, and he will lift you up and he will make you great. And as a matter of fact, you already great because you were created by God in any Thing that God touches, anything that God has created is great. It has the greatness of God in it. You have the greatness of God in you. Don't ever allow anyone to make you feel that you are of less importance to God than they are. Because as we see in this lesson, Hagar and Ishmael were important to God. God had made a covenant and he had made a promise with Abram on how he was going to bless his seed through him and his wife. And that was one agreement. But just because he gave Abram and Hagar, Abraham, Abraham and Sarah, that covenant did not mean that there was nothing for Hagar and Ishmael. See, and what that tells me is there is no reason for us to fight and compete. Because like I said before, God created us all, which means he can take care of us all. There is enough for everybody. I don't have to fight you. There, has, there, is, there is no reason for animosity and strife be, between us because God's got yours and God's got mine. And he's always going to deal with us justly because he is a just God. 
And this is such a timely lesson because we are living in a society that is attacking families. Families are being attacked on every side. But you have to stick together. As we see here, God honors family. He honored the union of Abraham and Sarah and gave them the son Isaac and gave them the blessing. But he also blessed Hagar and Ishmael, that mother and that son. And so that is a lesson to me to love your family. Do right by your family. It is in the will of God to love your family and to always understand that in as much as you were created, there is a place for you. Hagar's place was no longer in Abraham's house. That's why she had to be cast out. It didn't really go down in a pleasant way, but Hagar's place was not in Abraham and Sarah's house. So she had to move and Sarah cast her out. And it looked like there was going to be a bleak end or a bleak life in sight for Hagar. But God had a plan for her. God had provision for her. God has a plan for you. He has made provision for you. All you have to do is love him, trust him, obey him, and God will always take care of you.